Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, November 21st. Today's topic is the featured teacher for the month of November and our special guest is Katie Ann Wilson. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, and Tammy Moore. Thank you to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy who now will introduce Katie Ann. I am so thrilled to have Kitty Ann Wilson here to share her augmented reality expertise with us today. Ever since I first learned about augmented reality, I was intrigued and I thought it looked like a lot of fun, but I never imagined how powerful it could be as a learning tool in classrooms until I discovered Kitty Ann. I started following her everywhere. I participated in her Google Hangouts and her Blabs. I read her tweets and her amazing blog. And I very quickly realized its potential. Katie Ann was so willing to share with everyone, whether we were beginners or experienced AR teachers. I know you're going to be excited to hear what she is doing with her students and what she's creating. And you're going to want to add her to your PLN to continue to learn and share with her after today's presentation. I know you'll be hooked by her energy, her excitement, and her practical tips. I know I am. She is a presenter and a trainer with a passion for all things related to ed tech. Her first day in her career in education was her son's first day in kindergarten, which was over 13 years ago. Throughout her career, she has presented at many conferences, regional, national, international, ed camps, you name it. She founded the Augmented Reality for Educators Google Plus group, as well as the Twitter chat, AR for Learning, and I know she'll be sharing that with us today. <clears throat> she has reached over 100,000 plus educators and students with her blog, The Diary of a Techie Chick. So welcome, Katie Ann, and I would like to ask you our newbie question and have you take over. We always ask our featured teachers the same newbie question, but I had to add an extra one to yours. So we'd like you to talk about what does Web 2.0 mean to you, and why do you use Web 2.0 tools in your classroom, and what is augmented reality? Welcome, Katie. Well, it is great to be here, Peggy. Thank you for having me. And I am so happy you asked me that question. Um, actually, Web.2.0 is a late 90s term to when the internet was coming out with all these tools to say that, oh, these are new and improved. Well, we are kind of way past the 90s. And um, I don't use the term Web 2.0 anymore. I just use web tools because they're always constantly changing and improving. Um, so I love all all web tools. Um, one, because I can access them from any device. And um, since I teach in a computer lab, I have access to 20, 26 computers. And um, you know, iPads were one-to-one -one iPads. So having all these web tools just makes um, teaching and learning just so much easier for my kids. So I suggest if you don't use web tools, you need to really um, try them out and use them because they're accessible throughout all devices. Um, what is augmented reality? Augmented reality is when you take um, a physical object being a picture or a physical um, three-dimensional object and you overlay a digital content over it. And I love to do um, create tons of augmented content for my kids and I like to bring the world to them so you can literally um, put like a, take a picture of the pyramid and then overlay it using a device to scan the image and get a three-dimensional um, object of that pyramid and kids can spin it around and look at um, all sides of the pyramid, not just looking at a picture. So it brings learning to life. Okay, so I wanted to talk about, oh, and I have a star. Woo. 
I wanted to talk about reaching kids with augmented reality. I have a goal that I would love to reach at least one million kids using augmented reality. And we did the poll question, and I um, wanted to know how many people that were um, participating in this webinar today, um, how many would are actually using augmented reality in um, their classroom. And a lot are not. So it is my goal to um, intrigue you and help you um, use these augmented tools in your classroom. And there, here are some that I just love. Um, Quiver, which would be the butterfly, and then Cromville has three apps now, Cromville, um, Barcy, and then their science app. And for the little guys, there's the augmented flashcards. And then um, to really get um, augmented educational content, um, on that, they have a, the Star app, which is the ST, and they have tons of gosh, I want to say thousands of augmented animated lessons for math and language arts um, geared to the um, Common Core. And then they also have hundreds of three-dimensional objects and hundreds of 360s. And I will um, be demonstrating for you or let you see the 360s. It's a little hard to do the 3Ds, but um, they do have some demos on their page. And then you can go try them for yourself. And then, of course, NASA is amazing. And they have some augmented um, apps as well. And then there's my contact information. Feel free to follow me. Uh, my website is my name. And then I started the blog um, before I started the website. So I am the Diary of the Techie Chick. And um, so if you, if you tweet or search for that, you'll find me. Okay, and this is my family. This is the reason I go around presenting all over um, and getting teachers excited about ed tech. Um, my son, he is a senior this year, the redhead. Um, he is the one that I started my education career with. And um, we have gone on this amazing journey. My second son started preschool at the same time. So we've all had a lot of firsts together. And my daughter is now um, a first grader. So she keeps us young and alive and full of joy. Um, you always got to have that, that little girl in your life to really change perspective after having two boys. <laughs> so I always like to start and explain why we use um, AR. Using augmented reality really does enhance the learning experience and opens the door to endless possibilities. It brings learning to life, literally. Um, companies today are using augmented reality to train their employees. I'm in Kansas and Boeing. I'm literally like 90 minutes from Boeing. And they are using augmented content to train their employees. And they are saying, they are reporting to say that um, using these triggers makes their workers better, faster, and more accurate. They're if the ones that they divided um, their, their employees into three groups. They had one group um, receiving the training just with you know, a PDF file. Um, paper, the actual paper, and then one group receiving um, the information on an iPad that still is a PDF, and then one group receiving the information that was augmented. And the group that received um, the augmented content was 33% um, faster at learning the information and over 90% accurate. Um, so they get to actually see, and I would love to see this information um, that they have augmented, but I envision that they get to spin around and see the parts of the wing and um, different parts and where they go. And it just, you know, people are a lot of visual learners and it helps to see exactly how does this airplane go together. Um, so if they can actually see the three dimensional um, parts of it as they're learning it, it just makes them faster and more accurate. Okay, and um, the military is also using augmented reality. Um, they are got these special helmets with um, glasses on it, and that um, gives them augmented content about the area that they're there, that the soldiers are there. Um, so they're getting live information. So these things are being used now. This is why we have to start using it in our classroom to prepare our students for their future, uh, because these are the tools that they're going to be using. Um, and then, of course, um, in 
all across the industry in the oil field, they use augmented reality to check on um, the equipment. They can scan the equipment if something's broke. It will give them information on how to fix it so that they are not wasting their time. They're being um, efficient at their job. So we really need to get our kids thinking and outside the box, learning differently, not just with uh, worksheets and books. We need to give them the experiences that they're going to have when they leave the classroom. Okay, so now it's my job to get you excited about wanting to use augmented reality in the classroom. And I love, I teach middle school, and believe it or not, teenagers love to color too, even the preteens. Um, and I love using these coloring pages. And they, when I started this, there was one company. And now it has grown. It is constantly growing. And more companies are popping up using um, these augmented coloring pages. So um, Cromville, like I said, has three apps now. They have several um, characters, like Zoe. Um, Zoe's my favorite. Um, she's the water um, person. She uh, has one for internet safety. The computer pops out in three or pops out, and then she interacts with it, giving the kids internet safety tips, and the kids can write their own. And it pops up on her screen. Um, Quiver has some really amazing ones as well. Um, they have where you can do flags, and the flags change, and the kids can design their own flag. Great for introducing um, countries. They also have um, tons. I'm working on a solar system um, lesson, which hopefully will be launched tomorrow, uh, where I'm pairing up Cromville solar system pages with Quiver's solar system pages with Flipar solar system trigger, and then plus the 3D and um, animation from on that solar system. So, And Clover has the phases of the moon. It's not the solar system. They have the phases of the moon. So I'm going to have the phases of the moon. I'm going to have the solar system. I'm going to have all these things. And they all work really great together because you can't just use one tool. You've got to use all of them. Um, the one that fits, and I always say with augmented reality, you're going to use, it's like a pair of shoes. You're going to use the one that fits you at the time that you need it. Um, and so this is great that all of these companies, they're augmented um, content, but they all have their own special twist to them, their own little niche. Um, Disney has gotten into the picture. Um, they have what is called Color Play, and I had Mini Mickey Mouse on my couch sitting there. You can color them. They have tons of these. You do have to buy the books. They do have the free page, which is the uh, Mickey one um, that you can use. Um, color Live also you have to buy the that's from Crayola. Um, you have to buy the coloring books. They do have a, a I want to say a dragon that's free. You can use that. Um, I have all of these in my classroom. And I use them as writing prompts. So I'll give the kids, and I've cut off where which app is needed. Um, so I have the kids color, and they start brainstorming what kind of story could go with this page. And it's really great, especially for little kids. This would be great. They start talking about the story, and they're brainstorming, they're coloring, they're getting social skills. And then I have my kids write it. And once I see their first draft, um, I, we do keyboarding, so they have to type it for me, but you can have them handwrite it if you have little kids. Um, once I see their first draft, then I let them know which app that they need to scan. And the kids get kind of smart because the, the pages all have a certain design type. So once they figure out, oh, yeah, this is a Cromville sheet, um, they kind of get sneaky, and then they want to interact with their um, store or their character. I have this one lesson that I do. Um, I call it bringing characters to life. And I use the Cromville custom um, one. They have two. One's a pet. One's a little character. And I, there is a link to this, I do believe, in the live binder. And you can go ahead if you want to download the Cromville. Um, there's a link to this presentation. You can try out all these triggers. It's best that you try them instead of me demoing them because I want you to experience it too. What so is a trigger? A tr a oh, very good inter question. For interrupting, but that came up very quickly, and since so many of us are new to this, 
Uh, Peggy thought I ought to go ahead and ask that. What yeah, is no, a trigger? A trigger a trigger is the item that you're scanning. Um, so if it's a color page for like the Cronville ones, that's the trigger, the actual item that they're coloring. Um, some of them will be pictures. Um, it's just a trigger is the thing that activates the augmented part. So um, some people call them targets. Um, I call them triggers because that's what they do. They're triggering the augmented part. So. Um, with this one, um, I like to call it bringing um, characters to life. I have the I give the kids this one, um, or the other custom Cromwell page is the character, and I have the kids start um, brainstorming a character. What would this character look like? What would this character's habitat be? What would this character? Um, what's the story? So then the kids start. Um, brainstorming and they start de um, developing this character and then they have to write a story that fits around this character. And then once they, um, I've seen their first draft and they scan it, then they have to add the augmented part. So what happened um, to the character when, when they scanned it? They have to add that somehow into their story. So now I'm teaching them revision skills. Um, and I do this with middle school kids. This is also great um, with elementary kids and high school kids too, if they need that visual part um, to see things coming to life. So that's one of the um, lessons I do. This is the one that is hopefully will be launched um, this weekend, hopefully tomorrow. Um, Cromville has a new app. It is right now only available on the Android device. They are coming. It will be out on the, for the iPads. Um, they're having some issues with Apple and hopefully it'll get released very, very soon. Um, but this is one of their pages and I will be pairing this page with um, the Phases of the Moon with Quiver, um, the 3D objects, 3D planets from Ogvat, and then Blipar has a um, solar system trigger as well. And all of these will be um, part of this lesson. So kids will get to learn about the planets. Um, they'll get to interact with the planets. They could spin around the 3D model of the planets. They can compare sizes of the planets. Um, you can really see the different sizes. I know that some kids, you know, a circle on the page, one smaller and bigger. But when you see the 3D of it and you can spin it around and really compare, um, it kind of brings that into perspective for kids that, you know, um, the Earth is not as big as another planet and our Venus is really, really tiny. Um, so, and then you can, um, with the 360 one from Blipar, the, the kids can see them in order. Um, they can overlay it with other things. It'll be a really fun activity. This one's not quite out yet. Um, my lesson, but the trigger's there. And you do have to belong to Cromville's world. Um, to have, you have to have a username to, um, access the youth um, science triggers that they're coming out with. And to uh, if you belong to their Cromville world, you can also um, print out some of the lessons that they have. They have they're coming out with so many things. It's so great to see that they got on board and, and is incorporating education into it. So it's just not a coloring page. It's you know, a learning tool. So look for that one. Um, this is also from Cromville. This, they're doing some water use. Um, they have a couple water triggers. This is both for the Android and the Apple devices. And you can download these pages off of their website. Um, and you get to learn about um, water use with this one. So this would be a great way to um, be talking about um, how to create power with water. Um, and renewable energy. So this would be great for the little kids to learn about those topics or to introduce those topics. Hopefully I'm getting some people excited. I see the chat is going up really fast on my side of the screen. Um, Color Alive is the coloring books. So you do have to buy the coloring books. I live in the middle of nowhere in Kansas, so I get the coloring books from Amazon. Um, but you can get them from Target, Walmart. Um, I want to say jo Joanne's Fabrics had them. Um, Walgreens had them. 
So you can go, and they have different ones. They have a Barbie one. They have a um, Monster High one, Minions. I got a Minions one. It's so cool. I love Minions. Um, so these would be mythical creatures. And then um, I think there's one, it's for boys, like Skylander or something. I'm not in, I, my boys aren't into that. They're in high school. So <laughs> I don't, not for sure what the name, but it's, it's geared towards boys. So they're, they got pages for girls, pages for boys. And um, I have these in my classroom. I kind of have a tub of crayons and color pencils, and the kids just go crazy. And they, the stories that come from it, my, their writing has improved so much since I started using these coloring pages as writing prompts and to kickstart their um, brainstorming and writing. Their stories are just more vivid. Um, because they can, they can see it. They can interact with it. So then they can add those adjectives that they were missing. And it's just their writings improved so much by just coloring and bringing and scanning. And the character pops out and moves. And they can interact with them. Um, another one, this is a newer company, is Colorbug. And they um, are coming out with other pages. Um, they're not geared to education yet, but it's just another um, company that you can print out their pages in color and um, have different choices. But like I said, when I started this, it was one company, and now all these other companies have popped up, and they, they're, it's great. It's amazing because people, the industry um, can see that it's an amazing toy, but as teachers, we always take toys and we turn them into learning tools. So this is a huge learning tool um, for all ages. Even when I do trainings with um, teachers, they would color and they talk and, and they are wowed and oohed um, and go ooh and ah when they, the things come to life because it is amazing. Um, this is from Disney. This is Mickey. I brought him to life in my living room. Um, Mickey does have different choices, so you can also, I think, purchase the pages in the app and have them emailed to yourself so that you can print them so you don't have to order them online or find them in the store. Um, but there's different ones, like there's Sophia, um, there's Mickey and Minnie, and um, once you, it wa it'll walk you through the app. So when you scan the page, it'll, it'll tell you what to do. It's a really easy one. Um, it's geared towards little kids, so it it's really cool and really interactive. Um, my daughter loved um, bringing Mickey to life, especially after we went to Disney World in March, and she got to bring home Mickey. <laughs> so Disney's gotten on board, and I expect to see some educational stuff coming from them, not just the coloring book. I bet they come up with some other things um, very, very soon. Quiver is amazing. I cannot say enough about Quiver. Um, I love Dot Day, International Dot Day. And I do um, this with middle school students. Um, I have a lesson called Make Your Mark. And I have um, kids design, write me an essay of how they're going to make their mark in the world. And then they use this coloring page to design a logo that goes with um, their essay. And then they have to. I'm um, teaching them blogging skills as well. Um, then they have to um, blog about their um, interactions that they they learned from their um, logo because Quiver, this one's very interactive. You can change um, the ball. It can bounce. They've added new ones too. It can bounce. It can be um, spinning little balls. And they blog about their experience, um, how they interacted with their um, logo. And then I've also added, um, paired this um, for little kids, um, augmats. Like um, they have a 360 of a fire truck. Or is that a cockpit? It's a 3D of a fire truck. I've added uh, like the 3D of the policeman, um, some other things 
in there so that kids can, for the little kids, can see how other people have le have left their mark on the world, being like a firefighter. Um, and they also have a coloring. That's that's what Clever has. They have a coloring page of a fire truck, and then um, on that has a 360 um, and a 3D of a fire truck, so kids can kind of see inside the fire truck, and then see a three dimensional of a fire truck spinning it around. And then they have the 3D of the people, like a, a policeman and a fireman, um, so that you know, it brings a great conversation um, when, for the little kids, how they can leave their mark in the world um, and how others have. Okay. And this is an example of, um, I have kids take pictures, they have to interact with their um, logo, and then they blog about it. So this is one of my students um, interacting with his design. And they like to hold it in their hand, and they like to make it spin around the computers, and it's really fun, and they um, really enjoy it. And then um, Quiver has some, they have some fun ones. This would be a great one because we're getting ready for winter. Um, season, so this would be a great one for little kids and they could write about, you know, how it is to play in the snow or building an igloo or things like that and they can use this page to help with that. Um, and some kids may never see snow. If you're, you know, in southern Texas, you may air Florida, you may never see snow, so this would be a great way for little kids to um, interact with that type of environment and um, Cromville their pet character, I think, is a, it's a polar. It's supposed to be a polar bear, I think, and it has an igloo, and you can feed it too. So there's a, there's so many amazing things these companies are doing that we can bring into our classroom, and kids can really experience it. Okay, now I've talked about a 360 image, um, like the fire trucks, a 360 image. Um, I had a teacher ask, how can I use this? for, say, teaching um, the first Thanksgiving. Well, this uh, trigger is a 360 from Ogvat, um, and here's the instructions on how to use it. When you scan it, you're going to be um, in the ocean, and you're going to see a sailboat. Well, then I have paired a lesson with this. Um, I, this is a writing prompt of how kids can observe, what do they see, and then they could write about maybe how it is to live on a boat out in the middle of the ocean um, as they're, you know, making their way across the ocean. So kids can experience and kind of see. It's kind of neat to, you know, when you just have kids, hey, write about how would you how would it be to be on a boat? And then, you know, some kids have never been on a boat. Maybe some kids have never seen the ocean. And they scan this, and they're literally emerged in the middle of the ocean, spinning around, and they can look down, and they can look up, and really get a feel of, wait, there's no land. How would it be to be on the boat and living as a kid? And what would you see if you're on that boat? So this really does bring the ocean to the kids, and that brings a sailboat to the kids, so they can kind of see what it kind of may have looked like um, being out on, on the Mayflower at that time. Thanks, Peggy, for sharing all the links on the chat. Um, so this is really, really fun. So, and there is a, um, a link to that lesson, I do believe, in the live binder. Um, and if you sign up for, um, Augmat's giving away a million licenses to kids because they're excited that I want to reach a million. And um, I, this should be one of the triggers in the samples, and you can use it. And if not, holler at me if it's not there, and I will make sure that they put it there. They said that it was going to be there. So hopefully um, it is there, and you can scan it and use it um, as well. They also have other triggers, um, sample triggers. They have 360s, animated lessons and 3Ds, and there is a link on their website. If you click on it, you sign up, you're going to get a free access to these sample triggers, and you can try it out with your own kids. It's really amazing. Um, it's hard to explain it. You just have to experience it. Um, another one is um, the first winner. This is also a writing prompt. 
um, and kids can't because some kids, you know, if they're in Arizona and Texas and Florida, they never see a snowy forest. Um, so uh, I wrote a lesson on, um, and this is a writing prompt for how would it be on the first Christmas or the first winter um, for those kids that got off the Mayflower. How, how is it going to be? They may have never experienced this before. Um, so this, when, they, when your students scan this trigger, they're going to be in a snowy forest. So they can look down, they can look up, they can write down their observations. Then they can um, talk about how they may um, think it might be for the kids way back then to experience this environment coming off a boat. Um, after being on a boat for so long and, and it's snowy and cold and I think, and this is a great way, you know, to see the snow in the world without actually going outside and being cold. <laughs> but this is great um, trigger. So this is, I do know this is one um, in the samples. So make sure you sign up. I do believe that we, since I launched the um, campaign to reach a million, I think we're up to almost 300,000 kids um, that I have reached, and it's only been a month. Um, youth and teachers are starting to try these triggers, but with the lessons I'm providing um, in their classrooms. Okay. And this is, and I mentioned the 3D, and that we're going. To, I was going to have lessons with planets. This is one of them. This is the Earth. Um, so when the kids scan this, they're going to get a three-dimensional of the Earth, and it and it has the equator and the poles marked, and um, it's a great visual for the kids to see. This is what the Earth kind of looks like in a three-dimensional form, instead of just you know a cartoon drawing or a picture from um, the Hubble telescope or. Um, NASA's pictures, the kids can spin it around and look at it, and Augbat does have um, a three-dimensional trigger for each planet, including Pluto. Um, so I'm going to have this in that lesson that hopefully will be launched. I can finish it this week and get launched by tomorrow, and um, I will explain how I would use these triggers. Um, in that solar system lesson and the 3D. And they also have animated, they have what is called a field trip, virtual field trips, and they have all the planets as well um, for the um, virtual field trips. So I'll have that in there. I'll have the moon phases from Quiver. I'll have um, Blip Bar's um, solar system trigger in there, and as well as the ones from Cromville. And I'll explain how I would use all those um, to teach a solar system unit. So look for it. It's coming. Um, I also like to create, and um, Ogbat has asked me to create some current events. And um, I know they're really busy with getting ready to launch their um, update to their app. But this is one of them. This is current events, and I have pages that go with that. And all that um, is in, on my blog and on my website. Um, these triggers will change. Um, so when you scan them, you should get different content. I'm not for sure how often uh, um, that's going to change the triggers, but they are tied to things um, that are currently happening. There's a national current event and then a world one. Um, so kids can, um, if you're teaching current events, this would be great. Or if this would be a great center, um, kids can go and get the um, content. And then I have pages with um, higher order thinking questions on them, and kids can answer those. Or you can have a journal going and just put the picture, um, these triggers in the journal, and kids can scan it and you know write the date and then what's going on and um, journal about that, depending on how you want to use them. I have it very open-ended. Uh, because we all teach different grade levels, and um, the questions would be different. And I do have pages. Um, the pages are set for um, younger kids and then older kids. So, and you can mix and match them. Um, but all that's on my blog, my website, and uh, I do believe they're in the live binder. And if not, we can get it. I'm sure added. And this is one of my favorite ones. Not only um, is Augvat taking real life 
um, 360 images, but they're creating some. And this one was inspired by um, Jurassic World. When you scan it, you're in the middle of this dino land, and if you you gotta look, you gotta have one have the sound up because there's a music to it. Um, but if you look up, there's you know this huge dinosaur above you with his big teeth, um, which is really amazing. And you can spin around and be in this world that the dinos are in, and they're creating not only for the dinos, but um, they tell me that they have one for the inside a pyramid, how a pyramid would look when it was being built. Um, they're having a solar system one. Um, they're coming up with all these great triggers. They're not live yet, but this the dino one is, and it's really cool and it's really amazing. So you'll have to definitely scan it um, and spin around and make sure you look up and look down and have the sound on because it's a really cool uh, experience. And they're going to have a whole bunch more coming. So I stay with me, follow me, and when they launch those, I will let you know. I'm probably going to run out of time. <laughs> um, like I said, I love to create, and I have created um, some kindergarten content, and oh, it could be for preschool as well. These are interactive flashcards. Um, my daughter is actually helping me build these. Uh, I drew them. And then it's her little voice when um, you scan it, and she'll ask you, can you spell? And then there'll be words. There's one for um, basic words, color words, um, number words, and then there will be a whole bunch more um, kindergarten content coming. Those are the ones I have done. Um, I know, like I said, Augmat is busy with um, getting ready to launch their update to their app. So hopefully all this will be updated at the same time. Um, so there, there's also an animated lesson. So when you scan it, and I have an, I created an animated lesson um, that spells out cat uh, or dog or the number. Um, so it's really fun. And then the kids can use. My goal is to use them interact or independently. So the kids that are learning how to spell, um, if they don't and know how to spell cat yet, they can use the picture of the cat to um, make their words. So they can use all these flashcards together to um, build sentences. And um, once they start figuring out, okay, yeah, this is how you spell cat, they can replace the picture of the cat with the actual word of the cat. And if they're not for sure, they can scan it. And it, the audio will reassure them, yes, this is the word that you wanted. This is cat, K-A-T, or dog. So that's my goal. And a whole bunch, and I'll have some math ones too. Um, I haven't started on the math. Um, sometimes teaching gets in the way of my creating. Um, NASA is awesome, and I also have some of NASA in um, trigger or NASA content, the apps um, in that solar system lesson, plus the Starwalk or Skywalk, um, how to use those. Um, in that lesson as well. But NASA has come out with a couple of these. Um, both of these are triggers, or the black and white one and the, the, the blue one are triggers, so you can scan them both. And it will ask you um, which one do you want. And you, you get to choose. There's some 360s in there, like being where the on the launch pad, and kids can spin around and see what it looks like to be on the launch pad. They also have um, the different rockets that come apart, so you can tap them and you can launch them. So it's really fun, um, a fun way to learn about what NASA is doing and their rockets and being out on the launch pad. Um, I probably will never see um, a launch of um, rocket, but this would be a great way for kids that you know to get that view to actually be there, be immersed, and see um, a uh, rocket going and then being on the launch pad and spinning around looking up and really get the perspective how big it is. Peggy, you are awesome with all these links. <laughs> okay, and I was talking about Blip Bar. Blip Bar has a couple triggers that they have made. They are actually more of a um, self-publishing um, for teachers so that you can create your own. But they have made some. And this one, I like to call it Let It Grow. Um, you get to scan this trigger, and then it will take you through the cycle of a sunflower growing. 
Um, so, and there's daily questions. Kids, kids can go in there and see if the plant's healthy, how big it is, um, and they can watch this um, augmented sunflower grow. And I created a lesson that goes around with that. Um, and then I also have um, paired it with, um, I'm going to say, is it clovers? Plant cell. Um, and you can teach um, the plant cells with that, and you can teach about seeds and also added um, augvats, um, some augvat content in there so that kids can experience um, that as well. So this has a couple of those augmented companies in there, and I, it's really fun. And I also have a hands-on where kids can um, actually plant the seeds. I have two different seeds, like a lima bean um, seed, and I can't remember what the other one was, and the kids can compare them as they're growing. So that, and you can have a journal going, and kids can write down what they see, and, um, and they can compare it with their augmented sunflower. <laughs> Um, which is really fun, great for little kids. So, and they also have the solar, uh, the solar system trigger that I will have in there. Okay, so and I cannot talk, talk about AR without talking about um, Daiquiri's 4D elements. If you're into science and to the elements, I actually have the wooden blocks, but I can't share those with you. Um, what I can share is the printable ones, so you can go print them out. And I was on the team that created the lessons for these um, blocks, so you can go to their website or to my website and get the um, access to their lessons that goes with them. And I did the elementary one. So um, feel free to print those out and use those. They're really cool. It's really fun when kids um, hold or try to make the compounds like water. They have a hydrogen element and the water or oxygen element and you put them together and scan and then the kids are holding water in their blocks. It's really cool. They really love that. So um, feel free to um, print those out. And I'm probably running out of time, so I need to go. OK. So I can't talk about augmented reality without talking about how to make it. And so I'm just going to talk about some ideas um, in a couple companies. Zachary has a 4D studio at the moment. I do not believe they're letting in any new um, accounts. Um, you will have to follow them when they um, release and have new accounts made. Layer is a company that you can you guard limited um, with Layer. Lipar um, is the one that is more self-publishing for educators. And um, it's the one I've used for a couple um, of my um, self-created. Augvat will also let you create. And there you have a teacher community where you can, and that's where a lot of my stuff is, where you can share with um, your stuff out with other teachers or get access to their stuff. And then Erasmus, I don't do a lot of trainings with Erasmus because it can be flaky um, and hard to use. So I don't use those. And this um, picture, this is my little avatar. Um, feel free to scan it. The instructions are there. And you'll get, um, when you scan it, you'll get all my um, social media links. So you can click on it and follow my Twitter and my um, Instagram and such. Um, some ideas to create augmented reality are interactive book covers. You can do book talks, book reports. We are going to be doing this in our library. I took um, a poster, um, The Wonder. Um, and I augmented that to, and it goes to the book trailer, um, the author information, and some information about the book. So when the kids scan it, they get information about that book. Um, we are going to do it with, um, like, we're calling it book talks. Kids will be creating these and um, doing, you know, how they like the book and information about the book and getting kids excited to read about books. Um, you can also do interactive dioramas. Um, it would be really cool to have, say, a habitat and then have these triggers within the habitat. And kids can go scan it and see um, a three-dimensional of the animal or um, that could live there or a 360 of that environment and actually be immersed in it. Um, so I think that would be really cool. Um, history projects on the same reports. I love to do these with my kids. Um, they scan it and then they get 
um, I do a lot of green screen. They get a report of the kid talking with that historical person um, on the green screen. You can do it with audio clips. You can have interactive maps. Um, put a Google map in there. It's really cool. Um, you can do it with math concepts. If you're doing um, centers with math, and you can have the triggers in the center, and then the kids can scan it. Or you can have create. I create interactive notebooks for these um, math triggers as well, and the kids can get the concept right there, an example of it being worked out, or an explanation of the the vocabulary for the math. It would be great um, ideas. We are doing interactive science fairs at my school. Um, where kids will scan the triggers and they'll get um, the interview with the kid explaining their project and some other things, maybe uh, um, the data, the raw data or examples of the video of their um, experiment. You can also do it with problem solving strategies and have triggers throughout your room. You can do scavenger hunts and I've created a couple of those and you can get those off my, uh, give an example of one off my um, blog. Okay. Ooh, I feel like I'm, I don't want to run out of time, but I still want to talk about um, ways you can stay connected with me. I do do the Twitter chat AR for Learning. Um, we try to have it on the second and fourth Thursday. Um, since Thanksgiving kind of fell in it, we kind of shuffled it around. Um, it is at 8 p.m. Central. Um, I also do um, Google, um, or it's not was a Google Hangout. It's a blog Hangout. Depends on, I guess, my mood. And um, it's called Let's Talk AR. It's um, on Wednesday nights. Um, I do put a monthly schedule in our Google group, um, so you can always. And I tweet it out and such, so you can always check our um, group for the schedule. Um, like I said, we did a little differently with Thanksgiving being here. People wanted more um, Twitter chat, so we kind of moved things around. Um, we may have to do that as well with um, Christmas <laughs> um, for in December. So stay connected in, um, with our group, and you'll get our schedule of when we're going to be talking. And I can have impromptu. You can talk to me anytime about AR on Twitter and um, in the group, and I would love to help you. Um, here's our group. Um, so feel free to join. I think we have over 400 members. Um, so if there's something I don't know how to do, um, I can connect you with um, somebody that's using a tool. Um, I I kind of know all the tools. I just don't use Erasmus just because some people love it. That's great. That's the tool they love. Um, I suggest using it. I just I don't like it, so I don't use it. Um, but I can connect you with other people that may use it and they could help you out with that. And then um, here are my resources again. And um, like I said, I'm trying to reach 1 million kids and I've, I'm getting there. In one month, uh, um, almost 300,000. So I'm excited. And I know Lori probably has questions for me. <laughs> yes, I did capture some of them. Um, Are these all iPad apps? I saw something about Android, but what sort of they um, apps they for? Are, um, they are all um, iPad apps except for right now the Cromwell Science uh -huh. one um, is only available for Android. Um, but they're also all for Android. Okay. So any of those devices, these apps will work. Uh, can you scan and then project the image as well? Yes, you can do that. Um, for the solar system lesson I'm creating, um, one of the activities is a star mm -hmm. walk. And I suggest um, connecting your iPad to the projector. And then um, you can move your iPad around and see the, all the stars and mm -hmm. planets. Um, so yes, mm -hmm. you can do that as well. And if a classroom only has one or two iPads, how can they use AR? Um, that's a very good question. Um, I would do it as a center mm -hmm. then if you only have one or two or pairing um, kids up so that you have more than one kid using the iPad mm -hmm. at a time. Um, but it is very, very possible to just have, you know, limited amounts of um, devices and you can still use AR. Will it, will it run on a whiteboard or on Chromebooks? Um, the whiteboard is just 
the, it's the projector. So yes, you can project it on the whiteboard and you can use um, your tools um, with it. It's just an overlay image. Mm -hmm. um, if you know how to use your tools with the whiteboard, you can, you know, circle and whatnot. Um, Chromebooks, um, I, I have not seen these apps being able to use with a okay. Chromebook. Or what's an alternative alternative to Daiquiri? Uh, this teacher wants students to to create 3D overlays. The the blip bar for um, education, the blip builder, is what they call it. Um, if you go, I do believe I have it on my website as well. But if you go to blip bar, you can request um, an account in, uh, underneath the education part, and um, especially tell them I mm -hmm. sent you so that they know that, <laughs> that I'm reaching you as well, and they'll get you an account, and it's free. And um, with them, it's unlimited um, triggers. You can have as many triggers as you want. Um, and the only thing that they have for file size is you can't have a very long video. Like, um, they'll limit you to the video size. But other than that, um, it's pretty much unlimited. Um, as long as it's digital, you can do it. Terrific. And as far as scanning, I saw QR codes scattered through there. Uh, are you actually scanning the code, or do you have to take a, a picture of the object? Um, the QR codes are to direct people to those uh -huh, tools. Okay. Um, um, but the actual, like the mm -hmm. coloring pages and stuff, you actually have to print those out. Okay. Or create the or print out the picture, or depending on which trigger you're using, you have to actually. Um, well, you don't have to actually print them out either. You can do it. You can scan it off the mm -hmm. screen. Um, as long as you have the image, you can scan it. Okay. Uh, Susie would like to to share. Let's give Susie the mic. Okay. Hi, Susie. You have the mic now, Susie. Go ahead and click on the talk button. Oh, connection issue, it seems like. Uh, Ben's question is, which of the, the AR tools that you use works like Erasma, where you can create your um, own triggers and overlays? Augvat, you can create your own triggers and put them in the teacher community. Um, they actually create it for you. You just send them the stuff and they'll make it. Um, and then Blipbar um, has their Blip builder that you can also create. Um, so those are the two that I would use um, over Erasma. Okay. Susie. And um, if anybody is wanting to create, they can um, stay in contact with me, and I would love to help them walk them through it. Terrific. Uh, Susie's mic's now working. How about now? Yep, now we hear you. All right, I'm sorry. It worked last Saturday. I just wanted to say I didn't have much to add about the dot day, but I will say just for my students, just alone starting with the dot was very cool, and they were enamored. But then the next step that was so neat was you give them the second page, and they create different kinds of designs, and they really got thinking. And that was really neat. They're all the first time, but then they really think about, well, what if I did this? What if I tried that? So that was really neat. And there are a lot of free pages on the Quiver Vision page. There are a lot that aren't. But there were enough free ones that they, they were just in awe. There's even ones that turns into a video game that they loved. Yes, I love that one, too. It's hard to know which ones to share when you present. Okay. Um, Thanks so much, Susie.
Uh, yeah, thank you, Susie. Does anyone else want to take the mic and share their experiences? If so, please raise your hand. And while we're waiting, Eileen asked, what would be the youngest grade or age to try this with? Preschool. <laughs> Even before <laughs> that. Um, I, I was doing this with my daughter and before she was in preschool. Wow. Um, just to see mm -hmm. her reaction. Um, and she, and she can do it. I, it's really easy. You're just scanning. Um, they may need help knowing which app to use, but once they got the mm -hmm. app, they can scan and hold it, and they they love it, and they ooh and on. They try to scan everything. Mm -hmm. Then I would I would guess that. Yep. I don't think I see any okay. other any other hands up to share. And those were the questions that I was able to capture. So thanks so much, Katie Ann. Oh, any time. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will talk about our, our upcoming show. Oh, Kitty Ann, that was so great. And I know that once people actually get those apps on their devices and start scanning some of those triggers, they're going to be as excited as you are. And you are so right that until we experience it, we don't really get it. You know, we can hear how to do it and we can see examples of it, but it's when that stuff starts jumping up off the page that we get excited and the kids definitely get excited. So thank you so much for sharing. Now we won't have a show next Saturday because that is Thanksgiving weekend in the United States. But on December 5th, we have Refrans Davis coming to join us. And she has so many great things to share. I have no idea all the things she might talk about. But I'm sure she'll bring up some of her ideas from um, her new book, The Missing Voices in Ed Tech, which focuses on all kinds of diversity in our environment. And then the following week on December 12th, we have Dr. Lodge McCammon coming to join us. And he hasn't narrowed down his focus yet. Again, he has so many things he could talk about. Um, he's done so much with paper slides. He's doing an amazing job of creating songs for all 50 states in the union. And um, he's done a lot with flipped learning. So I can't wait to have him join us on December 12th. And with that, I'm going to let Lori just tell you about these other opportunities. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered together all his PD resources in one place, including the Host Your Own Webinar series. You can sign up for a free Blackboard Collaborate session as long as you make your session public. You can also nominate a featured teacher by filling out the form here. The form's also in the resources section of the Live Binder. As you leave the session, you should be taken to the survey. Uh, there are other ways to get to the survey, either the survey link in the chat box or in the Live Binder again. When you complete that survey, one of the things you can Request is a professional development certificate. It will print out with your name and make sure that the email you use is a personal account rather than a school account because schools tend to block this from getting to you. The video collection and audio collection from past shows is available in iTunes U. Also, past shows are available by RSS feed as well as of course, the full Collaborate recording. Again, special thanks to Katie Ann Wilson, to Steve Harkadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>